This is the lower half, uh, the tube frames of that uh, Plymouth Chrysler minivan thing. Of course, one is about six inches shorter than the other. That's the middle seat. That's the very back seat. I have to narrow them and make them about that wide for that piece right there. And now i got to consider where it's going to hinge and all that stuff too. So um, I'm probably going to have about two or three springs cut it about right here and then go to the other end so I can bring these two curves together, this one and that one, um, meaning the whole middle section is going to disappear and then they're both going to be the same width. I just got to remember that they, they didn't exactly evenly place the springs. The, you know, this one's three inches, this one's four, this one's three, this one's five, two, 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 you know what I mean? Nothing, everything's different all the way down. And I got some weld spots here. Now this is a, a round two, but it's kind of like, uh, it's not a round tube, it's triangular shape of some sort, and it's sitting in this little pocket of metal, and we got this big bracket on the bottom on both sides. Am I going to use those? I don't think so, but that one and this one have them in different locations. This one has them this is probably like seven, eight inches in. This end's about two inches in. But this one, they're both about eight inches in. So I just have to find a way to make two seats out of uh, two seat bottoms out of two long bases. Probably take the springs out first. Or uh, get a tape measure, be good. Where's my tape measure? Then you got 20 tape measures. You can never find them when you need them. This one going, well, this is about, we'll go with that. This here is about, we'll go from tube to tube, 17 inches face to face. So about eight and a half, eight and a half, 16, 17 inches. So if I went eight and a half, where do I end up here? If I go eight and a half, I end up about right there. But if I go eight and a half on this end, I end up about right there. Problem is, this one, if I go eight and a half, I end up with that bracket. Um, no reason I couldn't cut the end off, move it over to here, weld it all back up. This end, what do we got? Ooh, just eight and a half. So this is my only problem, this one here. This one's really close to the end. I might have to use some of the material in here. I don't think that comes out, but then again it won't get in the way, so probably won't matter. And the fronts have plenty of room because this bracket is way, way inboard. And I'm only cutting eight and a half inches and that's way beyond eight and a half inches. Uh, maybe go a little fatter. I don't know. We'll see. I'm gonna leave extra. I'm gonna cut it at like nine or ten and then take those pieces and uh, put them together. Set them together, see what it looks like. But, uh, what the project is today, cut these two to make two bases. So I'll take pictures as I go and a video here and there, but I gotta get these things cut up. Alright, see you in a few.
folks.
up. There's one bottom. There's the other bottom. I just got to weld them up. Uh, make a brace across the back. I'm not going to use this stuff. I don't like that stuff. We'll see. I might save these brackets. Though. I like those. Even if I save two or maybe one of these big ones, the dual east is a double. A double. And there's a couple singles, too, right there. But, uh, I gotta do a lot of grinding and cutting. Phew! These are those uh, little black, black, um, black, yeah, black brackets from the original seats. I like the pivot point. I just gotta narrow out these tubes, bring them together, and put the springs back in and make some kind of brace for across the back. Pro probably a piece of angle iron. Uh, might have to cut it off completely. It might get in the way. I might just cut it here and go straight down or at an angle or whatever. So we'll see. Well, I tacked those brackets on there earlier. Um, instead of messing with trying to make a put a piece of angle iron across the back and mess with it, I just realized that I have enough of uh, material from the back of the seats between the two of them to put one of the double brackets in the middle of each seat. So I ground off the remains on that on that back piece that I had there and cleaned them up, right? And now I'm cutting a new one for the middle that will have this two-hole bracket. So I'm going to wedge that in between there, make sure everything's square. It's 16 and a quarter between each tube across the bottom. And uh, buzz that thing in, and there's the back bolt of the back of my seat. You see how the front folds up? Yeah. I can't do it right now because that's in the way. But um, that is the back bottom mount of uh, the back of the seat, which uh, might help a little bit. I have an idea about that. But i got enough material here to do the other one. And if I don't, there's another one right here on the other seat. And I'm going to cut the singles off. I might save the singles for the front. I don't know. Or I could put two more of these in the front. Very easy to cut off. A weld here, weld here. And there's one on each side. They didn't waste their time welding, you know, inside and outside. They only weld the outside. Probably done by a robot. Who knows? But uh, I'm going to clean this one up, stick it in there. And uh, the first one will be done. Now what I did up here, you can see the slice, I took the two tubes, cut about, I think it was an inch, an inch and a half out of the middle of them, then I took that tube and cut a slice of the piece that I dropped, and uh, put it on the inside, and I did uh, like a plug weld, but I cut a notch in both tubes, in three places all the way around, and um, I did like a little wedge weld to hold the piece in, tacked it in on one side, put it together, make sure it was nice and straight, bolted it to a piece of metal, and then... You know, continue to fill those triangles all the way around. There's one there, one there, and one on the bottom. Not like you're going to see them, but it ended up that I have plenty of clips. These are the clips that hold the front of the uh, the screen that holds the material in. And, of course, these are the ones for the back, these holes. That's where the springs go. And I'm going to have one back bracket in the middle. And uh, that's it. Seat number one will be, uh, for the most part, made out of... Two, bench, two bucket seats from the front and two bench seats from the back. That Chrysler van. And uh, this is like a powder coat paint. It's a little pain in the ass to get it off. But when all is said and done, I can sandblast that stuff off and clean it up. Put it in some kind of paint. Because I don't want to leave them bare metal like this. They'll go to hell in no time. Uh, probably just like everything in army green. And then upholster them and have fun. But this is the pieces that I cut out. No sense trying to butt weld those again when I can just make a whole new piece, right? And like I said, plenty of material, so here we go.
five and a half inch in the front because my um, body my frame is at an angle I believe it was seven degrees um, I'm making the bracket at the same angle so you know, the brackets flat but yet the front tube slope up at five and a half inches so when I put it in the car it's gonna end up uh, let me give you an idea when I put it in the car it's gonna be like that not like this it to be about that high perfect so I'm figuring let's keep these brackets flat with the floor and uh, weld them back in that way. Now I just got them tacked here and here. And I gotta weld the other sides almost all the way around. Let's see if I can fill that little crack. Maybe, maybe not. I might stick a piece of wire in there and try and fill it. It's about a quarter of an inch. But um, I cut it and I thought it was crooked and I measured it. This bracket isn't exactly straight, but the holes are. So that's kind of weird. But there's my angle. I'm gonna buzz this, buzz that. Flip it, do the other side, and then uh, probably start on chair number two. Seat number two, there's the original aluminum pieces of crap I didn't want. Which, uh, there's the bracket for it. You're just like this one. I even have plenty of material to cut off the end. I have to grind the bivets off of the, uh, where is it? Right here. I gotta grind that and that off after I figure out the width which is 16 and a quarter between tube to tube I did it front and rear so it's 16 and a quarter from here to here and here to here squares it up nicely and uh, the brackets that I cut off the original tracks work good so here we go I'm gonna weld a little bit I'll get my get my elf to weld if I can get him up from under the bench Now I left that extension that connected to that seat adjuster thing, I left that on for now. Um, one problem is this part of the tube that comes down, when you fold the seat up it wants to hit this little piece here. So I'm going to cut about a quarter of an inch that off so it'll fold all the way. Not all the way forward, but a damn good length of the way. The play I have right now, if I can hold it down for you. I hold it down with my hand and aim the camera there. See it hits right there. And that's, you know, pretty upright. I wanted it to go forward a little bit, or else you were going to be jumping into the back seats to get in. Jumping in between the front seats to get into the back seat, that's what I meant. Now this hits on the other side of the tube, so that's as far back as it goes. I mean, who the hell is going to lay back that far? So I'm going to go about there to there. So I've got maybe four inches of swing. I don't know how many inches that spring-loaded thing has, but... Uh, that whole mechanism can hang under here on a piece of angle iron or who knows what. And this would be the passenger side because uh, I would put the seat adjuster on the right. Or I could put it on the left. That way if um, somebody got in the car and laid it back and I didn't like it that way, I can always reach it without reaching over the seat. But I just got to cut my springs, put it back together, take a few pictures, and then start on uh, the uh, driver's seat. Oh, here's number one. Ready to rock and roll. I'm gonna hold, open it. It opens to that far. Way back there. Probably a seating position will be about that. And it closes to there, which is fine for me. It's enough room to swing a leg in behind a seat or whatever. But, um, that's number one. Hold on. I think we're going to stick it over here and get cracking on number two. And I'll put my screen under it. And here's the ratchet mechanism. This thing can go underneath after the fact. Like that. 
I had to do it one hand here. Can go right there. And there's my seat adjuster. No big nasty sliding brackets, nothing. I'm going to make it so they mount down permanently. And the only thing I'll be able to change is the angle of the back of the seat. If I want to change it, I'll unbolt the seat, put some shims or adjusters or adjust it or what. I really don't care for back and forth. I'm six foot four, so once it's in, it's in. You don't get in. I get in my wife's car, move it all the way back. So what's the difference? But I got rid of a lot of this stuff. I don't need two big pieces like that in there. I don't need all this plastic or these metal headrests or aluminum pans. They are kind of cute, but they're what I was looking for. I got the old baskets top and bottom now. How can I explain this part? <laughs> that this piece is the top of the front seats. This is the very rear seat, bench seat, the, sh uh, the long one. And this is the very rear seat, the, the uh, front seat, the short one. I mean, the middle seat. The way that it works out, you come to length to fit. Um, 16 and a quarter inches wide on the inside of the tubes. Uh, cut the back off, weld in a new brace, put all the springs back in, weld it all together. And voila. I tell you, I'm beat. Don't you know my neighbors are going to mow his lawn? Uh, I am beat, but I really want to get cracking on number two without stepping on things. Alright, well, there's number two. Phew! What did I get myself into? <laughs> Well, here's what I got to grind off of number two. The front's all welded. There's a piece in there about three inches long. I tapped it in after slicing it and it's good. But that one's coming off and this one's coming off. I just got to grind on the weld right here and right here and it snaps down. The front weld that they put was nothing to clean right up. That's it, going good. This is number two. It's been a long Father's Day. Oh, by the way, happy Father's Day, all you fathers out there. Went to see my dad. And a whole bunch of goodies. <laughs> All right, still cracking. There's two. The last two I need to cut off. Ugh. There's one of them. There's chair number two. And uh, you can see from that tube to this tube lines up pretty good. I'm ready to cut my center section in the back with the two bolts. I just gotta cut it. All cleaned up. And all cleaned up. Ready to go. Weld this in, put the springs back in, do any uh, sharp edge grinding, and uh, I'm good to go. So. I gotta cut this puppy on that line and that line. Not shit here. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Almost done. All this for a couple seats. 
couple custom seats, right? What a freaking mess. But check this out. Kind of dark, but uh, sweet. It's my backs, in which they lost their lifting board because it's in front. Even got a little footroom in there. Once it goes up a little, too, pretty cool. My seats aren't higher than the side of the uh, thing. They could go up a little bit. You now that ratcheting mechanism thing can go in here. It can have one lever, and both seats could be adjustable. As far as the back goes, not back and forth. I think it's actually at a pretty good position right there. Now this extension off the thing that makes it ratchet and stuff is actually off the ground because I have it on a 1x2 tube in the back, or 1x3 tube. It's just sitting on there with the bolts, but... Alright, I'll get some pictures. I'm going in. Have a good night.